For most girls, prom is one of life's greatest milestones. Prom night is gonna go hopefully spectacular. Oh my goodness. What is my baby daddy? Yeah, my mom is like super excited. Like, I don't know, my dad don't know. Like, maybe it's a guy thing. Maybe guys don't really care that much. I don't know. It's not that he doesn't care. Mai Tai is the youngest of Robert Ross's 21 kids. He has seen a lot of proms. Each one of them know each other. All the girls are so close. The boys can slip in and they'll take care of them, but the girls is, the girls is close-knitted, all of them. I just you know, I love my girls. You know, they, they daddy's girl. And Ross would do anything for his 12 girls, especially since he was not always there to do so. In the 1960s, when Ross was as young as Mai Tai is now, he was one of Chicago's elite high school basketball players. You know them the old shorts from the 70s, so you know don't nobody wear that kind of mess no more. The shorts come now, come down almost down to your knee. But all that changed with one call to the principal's office. I come to school one day, I had to go to the principal's office. He was saying, you ain't got no basketball career, you got a job career. I said, what you mean? So he talking about these five girls said they pregnant by me. After that, Ross put most of his energy in climbing the ranks within various gangs and making money as a pimp to as many as 10 girls all under the nose of his mother and grandmother. Because they thought the girls was coming by my house was church girls. So, you know, I was, uh, till they seen some white ones, they was like, is that white girls at the car? And I was like, yeah, they friends of mine, you know. So they didn't really know what my, them girls were doing until they was watching TV one night and they had the ladies of the night on Channel 2, the streetwalkers on Stony Island. And the girls' mothers didn't know either. They thought I was just the nicest kid from the church. Boy, they seen their daughters on that TV. My one of my one of my girls called me named Cynthia Flowers. She said, "Don't come by my house. Pick me up in the alley." I said, "What you mean?" She said, "We on TV." Over the span of four decades, Ross served more than 15 years in prison. In 2000, he was convicted to serve nine years for a drug-related charge. Ross was released in 2010 and decided to set his life straight once and for all. He found support through Islam and Teamwork Inglewood. Well, I met Robert in 2010, and he actually walked into Teamwork Inglewood, and he told us, he came through our reentry center, and he was like, I've heard about what you guys are doing for reentry, and I just got out of jail, and I need some help. So I let him meet our executive director at the time, who was Jacques Conway, and Jacques said, you're Robert Ross, and he said, yes. He said, you saved my life. Jacques said that these young men um, literally were about to kill him. And he said that uh, because of Robert's reputation, he said in order to get out of the issue or the situation, he said, you know, my uncle is Red Ross. And the young men left him alone. But Jacques had never met him. Dropping off some of Jacques' Program. information so the kids, make sure all the kids get it. Ross's reputation for pimping and crime did not lose strength while he was in prison. His job with Teamwork Inglewood, however, is making him known for a different reason. Because when you meet God, all he's going to ask you, what did you do for the people? Your spirit. And if you ain't done nothing for the people, then what was you really living for? He keeps us legitimate in the fact of he makes sure that we understand where the ex-offender is coming from and what their plight really is. All right, well, I'll turn around and pick you back up. Robert is very sensitive and he will never tell people, and he doesn't think I know this, um, that he cares about people more than his past really says it does, especially since he's been out, that he recognizes what he's done and how it affects people and how it affected families. So he's trying to serve penance without not looking tough. I thought I was on top of the world, but I was really at the bottom. That all that stuff will fool you. The glamour, the lights, the glitter. See, you forget the jail and death go with that. Ross's 21 children were left without a parent as a result of his decisions. Since his release in 2010, at the age of 61, he tries his best to be there as much as he can. Nobody wants to miss their parent for nine years. And when a person is, you know, missing for that amount of time that's gone, it's a big void in your life. Like, it doesn't just affect them, it affects whole families. 
like I was always with him when like before he went to jail like we spent a lot of time together and he took me like everywhere with him so when he left it was like really sad but then like as time went on it was like I don't know I just I kind of like got numb to it because I had gotten so used to it I didn't know they really needed me like that till I seen the changes they was going through yeah that affected me I don't know if they knew it I might not have told them like I'm telling you I'm kind of rough around the edges. Here, Chloe, you want the baby? Ross currently has seven active children in college and supports every one of them. My Tyler will be the latest one to seek an education that he himself was never able to obtain. I've heard him tell his children, you know what, I went to jail for you. You don't have to go. So you need to do the things that you need to do in order to stay legitimate. He's not, I mean, he's probably trying to make up for it, but for nine years, you never get that back for nobody. He's home, we glad to have him back, and that's all that matters. A lot of people don't get to have their dad around. I get to have my dad here at my prom night, and I've always known my father, which is like really nice. So I'm happy that I, my dad gets to be around and see all this. But then I always tell people, you know, such thing as makeup. That's what women put on their face. You can't make up anything. You can only do better. Ashley Joplin, Medill Reports.